we're gonna be talking about how to lease space for your business in a commercial property. My name is Sean Katona, I'm a commercial real estate landlord, and so I've spent a lot of time recently working with business owners and tenants and prospective tenants and figuring out what's gonna be the best space for their business to make sure that they can thrive and flourish in wherever they physically locate. So we're gonna go through some of the important things to think about that the big boys would, the, the national name brand credit tenants, the Chipotle's, the Starbucks's, the McDonald's of the world. What are the things that they think about when they're picking a new location? So let's start with our demographics. If we are very clear on who our target customer is, it really helps us narrow down what part of town we want to be in. If you know that you sell, let's say, a dollar store to a lower income demographic versus you sell a premium product to very affluent customers, you might locate in a part of town that's best suited for that. So another really important thing to be aware of is how do your customers find you? Are they coming in by way of foot traffic? Is it an impulse or is it a destination that they're headed to? Do they search you online and then come down to a physical store? So you think a lot of the businesses that locate in a shopping center really like the foot traffic that come from the other businesses that are nearby. Think about a grocery anchored shopping center where every week people are heading in there to get groceries and so they also stop at the nail salon or they stop at the dog groomer or they stop at the smoke shop or they stop at the gym that's located in there. We have a preschool in one of our shopping centers and so we have 75 parents twice a day coming in to pick up and drop off their kids. So the convenience store next door is pretty handy. The barber shop next door is pretty handy. The restaurant next door also gets frequented. And so these businesses really thrive off of each other and the foot traffic that comes in because of the other business that those neighbors are getting. So that's a great thing to think about. And one of the reasons why a lot of people love to locate in a retail location, they want the foot traffic they want the visibility of a nice big sign out on the main drag or a prominent sign on the building itself. And those are some things that may not be available in an office property or a flex property or an industrial property. So really depending on how your business works, that might be why someone pays a premium to locate in a very visible location that can benefit not just from the foot traffic, but also the car count. And so, You'll see Starbucks today be very particular about locating on a hard corner or an intersection where there's at least 50,000 cars a day because they know if that many cars are coming by and there's good access coming in and out of the shopping center, we're gonna sell X number of cups of coffee or we're gonna sell X number of Subway sandwiches. And so they can very predictably forecast how well that location is going to do just based on some of those characteristics. Demographics, population density, household income, the number of cars that are coming by an intersection, and then how well people can pull in or out of that building, and if they've got great prominent signage. If that's not as important to you, I might think about looking at more of an industrial location or a flex location where you could locate off the main drag. You wouldn't pay the premium that a retailer would, but think about how your business works. You know, It might make a lot of sense to pay 50% or even 2x the rent if you can make three or four or five times the amount of business because you are generating foot traffic or you are getting a lot of impulse customers who come in and see your sign and say, ooh, that food sounds delicious or that ice cream looks delicious or you know what, my dog really needs a grooming or man, I really need to get my nails done and there's one right here on the way to my, my commute so they pull in. So again, those visible locations with uh, great access, with good traffic, can really make a big difference and substantially grow your business. So another important thing to have a good awareness of is how much space you need for your business. You know, we have suites that are as small as 900 feet and as big as, you know, three, four, five thousand in some cases. And having a good sense of that or what your budget is will really help you narrow down what to look for. It's one of the first questions that comes up when we're discussing with tenants. Well, you know, how much space do you need? A typical subway might only be 1,200 feet. Uh, our preschool takes over 8,000 feet. And so really have a good sense of how much space you need. And a great way to do that is to pop into other locations that are similar to your business and say, hey, you know, how big is this suite? 800 feet, 900 feet, 1,200 feet. This would work for us. And so you can reach out to landlords 
or your tenant rep, your broker can reach out to landlords and say, hey, I just wanna take a look at boxes that are 1,200 feet uh, and my budget is X. So another great thing to keep in mind is that this is absolutely a partnership between tenant and landlord. And landlords wanna put great tenants in their buildings that are going to be there for a while, uh, that are gonna be complementary, that are gonna add foot traffic, that are gonna create good synergy between the other businesses in the location. That's why you don't see five barber shops in a shopping center, right? You wanna have one of each use or category typically. Don't hesitate to reach out and be creative or come up with any questions. A lot of times we'll work with tenants to help them get ramped up. We can do things like free rent. We can help with their build out or their tenant improvement allowance, especially if they've got decent credit or good financials or the business has a good operating income. But in some cases, we're able to work deals where someone might not have a long track record or history or perfect credit or phenomenal income or a ton of savings, but we can do it in a way where it's relatively low risk for the landlord, but still allows a tenant a shot to get open and create maybe a new concept that's really fun and something that's in demand by customers these days. So we would encourage you to reach out either through your tenant representation, find a great tenant rep, reach out to your landlords directly and start asking some of these questions. Come down, tour properties, go see the buildings and really get a sense. And what will happen after you find a space that looks interesting is we put together a letter of intent that will usually come from the tenant to the landlord that spell out the terms of the deal. We're interested in renting the space for at least five years, maybe seven, ten, or it's not uncommon for someone to do a five-year lease with the option to extend for another five years so that they have the certainty and predictability that they're going to be investing in space and that location and establishing a base camp where customers know that they'll be for years to come. Uh, but we can help work through those terms and what's typical uh, in a deal if that's something that you're not familiar with. So reach out, say hello, come check out some of the spaces that we have available. We'll talk to you soon.